Welcome to Checks and Balances. I'm Michael Vincent. This is James Blair. And this week, our top five tips for retirement. So today's topic, top five tips planning for retirement, is really where I spent all of my career. So the idea of going, I need peace of mind for my future. Now, Mike, you might look at this youthful complexion and go, James, be serious. How much can you know about retirement? Um, well, I've been dealing in this space for over 10 years. I've spoken to hundreds of couples to make sure they've got, uh, I guess, peace of mind in retirement. Yeah. And it's really all about going, um, I guess, where do you want to go? What does it look like? And making mm. sure you're okay. So yeah. I thought we'd share our top five tips. Yeah. Always, always love a list. <laughs> so... The idea about why is it so important to plan for retirement is really for, for two reasons. The first one is we can get very comfortable with this drug called a salary, right? Yeah. Comes in once a fortnight, once a month, you go, this is going to last forever. But of course, you know, nothing lasts forever. The income tap is going to get turned off at some point. And it's about making sure that when that tap gets turned on, you can turn on your passive income tap, Mike. Yep. And make sure that you get paid that income for the rest of your life. Yeah. And we quite often hear people talk about um, you know, property as a strategy for retirement. Mm. It's just property, more, you know, more investment properties, rental income, rental income. In reality, they're only going to give you sort of, you know, five, six, seven hundred, twelve hundred a week each sort of thing uh, in that range. So it's about actually looking at what you want during retirement, mm. making sure that your investments and the assets that you have can give you that lifestyle. Yep. And I'm a big fan of property as an asset. Mm. I think, you know, if you can turn $100,000 into a million dollar asset and it generates capital gains over a long time. Yeah. But the way I think about property in retirement is completely different mm. because you've got to be very careful that you're not asset rich and cash poor. Yeah. So the other reason planning for retirement is really important is because you want to make sure you have options. You don't want to feel like you're forced to work till 65 or 70. I talk about getting to a point in life where you work because you love what you do, not because you need the paycheck. And it's super powerful, Mike, when clients hit that point. Yeah. Um, for a few different reasons. The, the main one is, uh, one or two things usually happens. The first one is they go, stuff this job, I'm out. screw these people. Yeah. I hate seeing Mike's face every day. <laughs> I'm going to go pick daisies in um, Philadelphia. Oh, I, okay. I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, the, the second option, um, and, and you know, excuse that exaggeration, maybe you end up um, reskilling or you do something you're more passionate about or you mm. give back or you spend time more time with your family or you do an OE. Yeah. There's lots of different options. The second thing that sometimes happens, Mike, is people fall more in love with their job. Yeah. So they go, you know, I get to see Mike every day. Mike and I are out there talking to clients, changing people's lives, helping them achieve their goals. Yeah. It, 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 it can be a very powerful position to get to. Yeah. And, and all of that really feeds into probably our first tip, which mm. is, you know, understand what you actually want in retirement. What does retirement mean for you? You know, quite often we hear people say, I want to retire at 65. You know, the classic. Does that mean you do nothing? Do you say goodbye to your job? Or does it mean you say, hey, actually, I've, um, I've always wanted to work outdoors, but I, I've never been able to afford the pay cut. Mm. So then how do we get you to that position uh, where actually that's what retirement means for you, at least for a while, while you still want to work, and you can enjoy that as well? So I guess some of the other things to sort of consider is, you know, a lot of people have the goal to downsize their homes. So they'll either downsize the family home and move uh, to a different city or into an apartment, you know, it's um, a change of lifestyle or you know, um, less maintenance on the property and these sorts of things, that's going to release some cash. Um, so it's important to think about when are you going to downsize, what are you going to do with that cash, how does that play into your, your investment options and those sorts of things. I think it's important on that point as well, Mike. Um, like I have a, especially if we're talking about Auckland in particular, mm. a lot of clients that might have their four-bedroom home and go, are we going to move into a two-bedroom apartment in the in a yeah, city yeah, or yeah. something? And they are oh, we'll release some cash. I don't know if you've been looking at those recently. <laughs> They're bloody expensive. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So firstly going, well, the thing that we're going to move into, will we release some equity? Mm. Um, in addition to that, um, maybe you've always wanted to leave the big smoke. You yep. wanted to, um, to move somewhere else where there's cheaper house prices and a lifestyle yeah. associated. Mm. Um, but the other thing is, if you can be in a position where you're not dependent on the downsides, yeah. once again, being in power, taking control of your future is, is the, main, the main key here, is going, well, maybe we do this, maybe we don't, but I don't want to have to be dependent on it. Yeah, and I guess to take a step back from that, the first thing to sort of consider there is actually, 
what is your cost of living at the moment and mm. what do you need moving into retirement? Yep. Because that's going to drive a lot of these decisions and where you depend on your assets and if you depend on downsizing mm. the home and these sorts of things as well. Yep. And that's a really important, if you uh, have a spouse or have a significant other, to, to have that conversation around mm. what does retirement look like? Do we want to travel? How often do we travel? Do we want to travel like Mike does first class, you know, to all parts of the world for multiple months at a time <laughs> because, you know, yeah. flying to... Um, the Greek islands and living that lifestyle with a cheap mic, is it? <laughs> Haven't done that for a while, man. Yeah. Um, but, but going, what kind of lifestyle does that look like? Mm. And the amount of times where somebody's spending, uh, say, $120,000 a year at the moment in expenses and then go, well, we're going to drop that back to $50,000. You're going, well, how, oh, does, yeah. <laughs> how, does, how does this yeah. how does this add up? No, cool. Yep. So that's tip number one, understanding what you want out of retirement. When will you retire? Will you downsize your home? What will your income look like in retirement? Tip number two is going, okay, we want these things. Are we on track or not? Um, this part's a little bit uh, trickier to understand. Um, really, the, the main ways to probably work this out is uh, if you're good with a spreadsheet, you could model it out and make some assumptions. Yeah. Uh, a tool like sorted.org or of course, um, a financial advisor is one who can, they can have those more robust discussions. So pair tip one and tip two together and then go, are you, are you on track? And my, even though I've been doing this for 10 years, sometimes I still get surprised by the projections. Yeah. So yeah. if you want a certain lifestyle, maybe you have um, you know, quite a few nice things in your life. I've seen clients who earn, you know, a million dollars a year who aren't on track to achieve their goals. Oh, yeah. And I've seen people $40,000 a year mm. um, washing cars who are on track to achieve their goals. Yeah. So having the context around, um, and when we say on track, the, the real word is peace of mind. Yeah. Am I on track? Um, do, I, do I have comfort? I'll be okay. And if you're not, you want to know. You don't want to have your head in the sand and go, oh, we'll let future Mike and James worry about that. Yeah, and it's a really easy sort of thing to do because you know, what, you're, what you're looking at here is ultimately, well, usually is a goal that's quite far in the future. So it's mm. easy to put it aside and put your head in the sand. But that, once again, fits into probably our, our third tip, which is if you have put your head in the sand or you haven't done much about it, it's really never too late to start. Um, you know, if you're thinking, oh, I'm in my 40s, 50s, 60s, and I, I've left it too late and there's no hope for me, um, yeah, it's, it's, you'd be really surprised what you can do in sort of five to ten years. Mm. Definitely. And, and sometimes, to be honest, I feel people use it, uh, if it's too late in life, the hindsight thing is, yeah. it's, it's horrible. It, it's really hard to stop thinking like that. Mm. But I, I feel like it's almost an excuse to go, well, I can't change it. I won't change my expenses or my strategy. Yeah. I'll just, it'll just be whatever it'll be. Yeah. But you can seriously, I, like, I've had clients come to me who are in their late 50s going, we have no hope, and they've been debt-free in six years, and they've been able to retire at 70. Like, yeah. like there's variables and income's really important, yeah. a couple other things, but um, you can make a big change. It's about actioning the change and going, we want to make a difference. Yeah, and I think that's really important for um, people who are starting a bit earlier on, and, and probably, you know, around our generation, is you, you, you can't rely on that New Zealand super. It's simply not going to be there, um, and if it is, it's not going to be in a form that's going to be that beneficial so we've got to make sure that we are making these changes as early as possible yeah i i don't project anybody under 50 i strip new zealand super out of the yeah. projections because i just don't think you can you can depend on it at all and to be honest i worry about those in their 60s going they'll get it for a period of time yeah but will it be means tested in the future will it look different mm. because we've just got an aging population and the yes, expenses are going to be too much yeah less good good looking young people to make the money to pay tax right <laughs> yeah no for sure so one of the other things to sort of consider there when you are um, you know a bit later on in life um, is what we call the sprint um, and this sort of uh, plays into tip number four for us which is maximize the sprint so the sprint is the period where you've finished working uh, sorry, finished you've finished your mortgage, mortgage, finished paying off your mortgage, but you're still working. So what that gives you is, uh, you know, a really uh, or a much higher level of disposable income mm -hmm. that you can choose what you want to do with. Now, a lot of people go, I'm going to enjoy this. Um, Understandable. Oh, You've yeah, had a yeah. mortgage for a long time. Yeah. Yep. But when really what you can be doing is really focusing that income on your retirement and on your savings and your investments. Mm. Mm. Yep. And uh, as I said, it's easy to go. Mortgage is cleared off. Yeah. Hallelujah. Just take Firstly, the pedal off. Yeah, yeah. To all the banks, like, they should be really nice. One thing I think the banks can do better, send out a nice letter. 
You've been paying interest for all this time. Send to your clients, congrats for paying off your mortgage. Well, they do send out a nice letter and it's, you had a personal manager and now you don't. Because <laughs> you've got no debt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, but when you're, um, when you're going through the sprint, it's really important that you maximize it. So say you're paying $2,000 a month in mortgage repayments. Mm. That should be going towards a managed fund or an index fund to start to build up your wealth so you can hit, hit that point where you turn on that passive income yeah. tap. There's some water coming out opposed to it being bone dry, Mike. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just want to jump back to um, the just quickly around those who want to start planning for retirement early. Mm -hmm. So just quickly back to point number three and a little plug to Money Bites. I talk about compounding interest in that scenario. So, and this is a great thing to, to teach your kids um, as well if you're going, geez, I wish I wanted to start it earlier. Mm. Um, just to give you an idea of the benefits of starting early, if you contribute $100 a week to an index fund, um, per year, that's gonna be about five grand. Over 50 years, so if you start around in your 20s, over 50 years, that's $260,000. If you're uh, making an 8% return, you're going to end up with about $3 million in an investment if it's an index fund over the long term. Um, so that's the benefit of starting early, the interest, making interest, making interest around compounding compounding returns. Yeah, those compounding returns can't be sold enough. They no. are absolutely vital. And even if you aren't starting out you know, early, making an active choice about where you're putting your investments and, and looking for a, a risk-appropriate return for you is, is, is definitely going to help. Ooh, that's a nice segue to tip number five, Mike. Uh, appropriate for your situation. So creating an investment strategy that is right for you. So there are multiple components to this. The first one is get your cash out of the bank. So you should have maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 as an emergency fund. Yeah. That's really important for, as we all know, life goes wrong, making sure that you're gonna be okay. But if you've got that money set aside, maybe you don't have any other short-term expenses, if you've got significant amounts in cash, you should be getting it to work. Main reason is interest rates are really low at the moment and there's a scary thing called inflation. But James, that term deposit's given me 2% <laughs> per annum. <laughs> maybe it's maybe definitely three not years getting 2%, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I actually saw this crazy, um, I listened to a presentation this morning by our investment um, consulting firm, My Fiduciary, and they talked about the cost of breakfast going up. Yeah. So over the last three years, the cost of coffee had gone up 50 odd percent, orange juice had gone up 10%. And it kind of gives you an idea around some of the, the pieces around inflation that the cost of living goes up. Yeah. So if you've got all your money in the bank and the cost of living is going up, it's not going to be good going forward. I've never seen you pay for a breakfast ever, James. <laughs> so, how, you know. It's a key part of the financial plan. I getting other people to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is firstly, don't have too many kids. They're pretty expensive. <laughs> Second, never pay for breakfast. <laughs> um, to the bank. Yeah. yeah. Um, the second thing you should be thinking about with your investment strategy is that not all your eggs are in one basket. Yeah. So uh, property in New Zealand is a big one. If you've got all of your money in property, for example, property can be a great asset. The downside is if you've got a lot of debt, you've got expenses, you can't draw the capital yeah. from an investment property. Yeah, you can't so, sell one bedroom on a house. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which means you can only spend the income which results in really you being very rich when you die. Mm, so mm. thinking about, well, investment property might be part of the strategy, but we need more liquid assets where we can spend some of the capital. Yeah. Another really key part is understanding your own personal risk profile. So quite a few of my clients will go, uh, like we'll complete your risk profile and go, all right, Mr. and Mrs. Client, you're a balanced risk investor. Mm. And they'll look at the difference in returns between a balance and a growth investment and go, that extra 2% a year looks pretty good. Why don't I do that? And the reason you don't do it is because you're not comfortable with it dropping that extra percentage. So a growth investment in a bad market can drop, say, up to 25% in a bad year. Yeah. Um, that might be okay if you've got the time frame, but if you can't sleep at night, if it stresses you out, yeah. um, it's just not worth it. And speaking about it not being worth it, you need to understand um, how much risk you need to take to achieve your goals. So if you can achieve your goals in like a, a low to medium risk investment, why take on the additional risk? Yeah. Um, so there, there are a few different aspects. You're also wanting to be thinking about fees, making sure the fees that you're paying for your investments are, are appropriate. Thinking about income, so making sure you've got the right, uh, I guess, balance of investments between maybe property, um, KiwiSaver, cash, um, and managed funds to give you the income you want. 
Um, and those kind of different components will balance out to help you create the right sort of investment strategy for you. Yeah, and hopefully all of those should get you to achieving that goal. Yeah, and if you're not if you're not sure, there's lots of really good tools online. You can talk to a talk to a financial advisor. Sort of org, as I said, is another really good place to go and look as well. Yep. Great. Okay, so we're going to wrap it up there. They are our top five tips to get you planning for retirement. The main thing is just be aware of your situation. Know where you are at the moment. Know what you want out of the future. Make sure you're making the most of your financial position. It's one of those things where we don't talk about money mm. that we go, am I doing all right? Am I not doing all right? I'll just I'll leave it for later. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that you're taking control of your financial situation. You've got good diversification. And I know, Mike, you're a big fan of that sprint. So making sure you Always. keep going after you pay down the mortgage. So we'll wrap it up there. Please make sure to give this a like if you're watching it, a comment, and also um, to subscribe to our channel. Really helps us spread the financial literacy, helps people take control of their financial future. Also make sure to check out Money Lights on YouTube. So our two-minute episodes explaining uh, money jargon concepts. So you'll see that we have about six episodes up. We drop a couple a week. Um, if you're a little bit uh, going, what does that term mean? Check out Money Bites and it might explain it to you. So thanks for coming along and having a look and we'll see you next week. Cheers.